I've spent some time using this Palm M515. It's a very early color screen model and it's in this awesome sleek metal case design, yet I hate it. The display on this is a transflective color LCD, which means it can be used with the backlight off. However, in practice, it's often quite difficult to see, and the colors look kind of washed out when the backlight is off. To make this usable, the backlight has to stay on most of the time, and that really shortens the battery life. But Bejeweled just looks so much better on a color screen, so I'm going to persevere and see where this goes. The idea is to match three jewels in a row by either swapping them horizontally or vertically. Uh oh, time's about to run out. I'm gonna get a few more in before it ends. There we go. Now I would like to carry this around with me sometimes, and the way I carry my Palm 5X around is inside a wallet. So if I take the Palm 5X out and I want to add the Palm M515 to it, it doesn't actually fit. So it seems that when they made this, they actually went to the trouble of making the channel smaller so that the older accessories couldn't be used. And it's not like this is a third party accessory, this is actually a Palm branded original genuine leather wallet. I can't believe they went to the trouble of making it so that later models wouldn't fit. And that's not all. If I have spare styluses, which I do, and I don't even have a stylus for this model, it does fit in there, but not quite, and so it just falls out. And these are not inexpensive accessories. These styluses are made of metal, and this is genuine leather. So they took a really good original design in which the stylus could be adapted for left-handed use by putting it on the left side and turned it into this. What a piece of sh**! Okay, this is not my favourite palm model. Uh, let's, uh, let's try and get on with it though. This is one of the first palm models to feature expandable storage with an SD card slot. So the largest card at the time was this 256 megabyte SanDisk, and this is probably not a very good choice for this model. Not only were these $200, but they were kind of overkill. The Palm itself has 16 megabytes of RAM built in, which is quite a lot of storage for the kind of apps this thing can run. There's also 4 megabytes of flash memory built in, which is just for the operating system, but with third-party tools you can take advantage of that. And there's about one and a half megabytes of free space in the flash, making that really quite useful. So instead of this 256 megabyte card, I'll be using this 32 megabyte multimedia card. Now this is the predecessor to SD cards, and if you have a close look, you can see that actually, they're actually a little bit thinner than SD cards and they've got a slightly different pin configuration and they do work a little bit differently but almost all SD card slots, in fact I think all of them, are compatible with this older technology and 32 megabytes is more than enough for this Palm. Now you can't put too many apps onto a card because it will slow this Palm model down but you can put some on here and the other advantage is if you want to install new apps you can just put them onto the card and they will just appear and you can run them directly from the card but it's usually better to move them from the card and install them on the internal storage. 
with this device not really having the ability to play any media and it can't play any music there's really not a lot of need to have a lot of space on this this 32 megabyte multimedia card is just fine I've installed a few games on here uh, there's SimCity there we go it's quite a good experience compared to when I played this on my Palm 5X I quite like the colour let's make some commercial zones there we go roads where we're going we do need roads okay we'll give it some power yeah that's not a bad little version of SimCity another cool game on this is Zap 2000 this is quite a fun game it's a pretty good little shooter I quite like to play this game on grayscale palms as well. It actually looks pretty good on those as well. But, you know, the colour is quite nice. I'd like to have a peek inside this, which is actually pretty easy to do. Because it looks like there's just four screws on the back. Unlike this one here, which is glued together and a complete nightmare. Um, the screws look a little bit rusted, but uh, not too bad. See if I can get there. We go. A little bit tight there, but that's not so hard. This thing's probably never been taken apart ever since it left the factory. Okay. Now I better take the card out. Hmm. It's like there's still something holding it together. I'm going to have to be really careful. I don't want to cause any problems with this thing. There we go. So there's some clips as well. All right. So that looks like it's the original battery. And this battery does still work after 20 years it doesn't work as well as new I mean it only gives about one hour of screen on time but that's enough to mess around with it okay I'll take some guesses as to what's going on inside here that looks like a RAM chip and that's probably the flash memory it's uh, perhaps some sort of controller chip an MX that could be communications I know that's a, a Maxim so that's definitely serial communications uh, I'm gonna guess that the CPU is under this sticker I might get that off and have a look yep there we go and it is a Dragon Ball so this is basically the same CPU that runs in the grayscale models. Uh, it runs a little bit faster at 33 megahertz. And it also means this CPU can be overclocked just like the older models as well. So I think what I might do now is put it together and then I'm going to run some scene demos on this to really push the limits of this little beast. Okay, card back in. Okay, some of the demos that run on this thing include Plasma, and you probably saw some of these running on the intro. And something I noticed with the overclock is with the demos that include 3D, they're definitely sped up a bit when the system is overclocked. Okay, I've got the overclock set, and I've got it set to the maximum speed of 66 megahertz. It does seem to be stable I haven't had any crashes doing this so I'll do a bit of a side-by-side -side comparison on the left here is standard speed 33 megahertz 
and just looking at it it looks like it is running quite a bit faster I mean it should be the clock speeds now double what it was I think that's uh, quite a bit smoother One of the problems with this model is that there's not necessarily a lot of apps that can take advantage of the color screen. And that's because this model really represents the end of an era. It's the last of the Motorola 68000 based CPU Palms. After this model, Palm switched from Motorola to ARM based CPUs, which ran a lot faster. And they also brought out Palm OS 5, which was specifically for the ARM platform. And a lot of the good new apps were developed for the ARM platform based palms, leaving this model kind of in the dust. It also means there's going to be some new and much more capable palm models to look at after this one. I'm glad I got to experience this model, even though I didn't end up liking it so much. I feel like I made it through, the die is now cast, and I can have a look at some of the later models in the future. If you like this, a thumbs up would be awesome, and if you didn't, a thumbs down would also be very useful. And I appreciate any comments or suggestions you might have, that stuff can be really helpful. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you enjoy some of the other videos on this channel.